Hi, Chuck Price, coming at you again today. I've been talking to you about God is for us. I don't even want to use the word if for Romans chapter 8. Since God is for us, there's no question that God is for us. Whether you know Him, whether you don't know Him, whether you love Him, like Him, or hate Him, God is for us. It's not going to change because of your feelings. God's all about you. Understand that. So I, I wanted to bring to you these, these thoughts, these points. I wanted to bring to your attention these thoughts. And so let's just get into it. Romans chapter 8, if you have your Bible, we're looking at Romans chapter 8. Let's just take the, the whole chapter and just see what God's been speaking to us about. So my first thought to you today is God is for us because he's given us his son. He's given us his son. Now you can read about that in verse 3. You can read about it right down in verse 32. He sent his son into the world as a sin offering. As a sin offering. All right, think about that. Christmas time. He sent his son. We celebrate the, the, the advent of Christ. All right, he sent his son. He sent his son to, as a sin offering for you and I. And again in verse 32, what more could God do but send his son to the world as a savior? God didn't spare his own son. He didn't spare his own son, but he gave him up as a sin offering. He didn't spare him, he delivered him. He delivered him for all of us. You know, Isaiah puts it this way, that uh, you know a child was born because a son was given. If Jesus Christ didn't come as, as the son of God, if God didn't give his son, then there was no child would be born. I think we can understand that. In John 3, 16, it's sufficient proof that he loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only, some people say forgotten son, it's not. Uh, it's begotten son, his only son. So don't tell me that God doesn't love you and is willing to lay down his son. Deliver him, offer him up, not just as a cute little baby in the manger, but as a sin offering. A sin offering with the penalties and the law that all that had to take place in his body and on Calvary. Understand the bigger picture. Wow. Uh, it's, it's huge in our own hearts and our lives. Look, look at verse 32 of that chapter. Not only did God not only withhold his son, he, he delivered him. He delivered him. Let's go back to that at Christmas time. Wrapped him up in swaddling clothes and he delivered him to the world. This is my son. Remember his water baptism when the heavens opened, when Jesus Christ was being water baptized? This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my son, my son. Very clear that God's for you because he delivered his son for us. In Romans 4.25, who has delivered us? for our offenses. Who? Who has the well? You know the answer. His name is Jesus Christ. The purpose for which Jesus came into the world is to become a sacrifice for our sins. That's the purpose he came. Not just to live a model life and to give us example, all good and fine. But he came that we would see his life and he would be a, become a sacrifice for our sins. Verse 32 also states that with this gift of his son, God shall give us all things, all that we need, not necessarily want. Listen, if you got only what you wanted, you wouldn't get what you need. This is me pausing for effect. If God only gave you what you wanted, you probably wouldn't get what you need because God sees the bigger picture, you see the immediate picture, and this is what I feel I, I want. No, let God give you what you need because Jesus Christ came as a sin sacrifice. So it's evident, it's evident, the first thought that's so evident that God loves you or he wouldn't have sent his son. My son Matthew, if he laid down his life for you uh, and died for you, I'd want to find you. And not to harm you, to hurt you, but because my son now was gone, I want to be close to you as an extension of my son. So listen, God loves you because his son died for you. For God not to love you would be a slap in the face of Jesus Christ who thought everything about you enough to lay down his life for you. So it just makes sense. It just makes sense that God loves you. God doesn't love me because I'm perfect and because I say the right thing, do the right thing. Many of you know me and that's not the way that I operate. But God loves me because his son died for me. That takes the pressure off performing. That, that, that takes the pressure off you and I to, to be, I mean, to, you know, to, to act, to, 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 to pretend. We just need to live for Jesus Christ, knowing that God loves us in our weaknesses, in our strengths, in our insecurities, things we're good at, things we're not good at, times where we say things that God loves us because his son died for us. It's proof that God is for us because he sent his son to die for us. And I rejoice in that fact. The second thought I want to bring to your attention is that God is for us because he settled the issue of sin. See, wow, yeah, he settled the issue of sin. It's there. Verses 1 to 3, Romans 8, verses 33, 34, we're told that through the gift, the sacrifice, the resurrection, the intercession of Jesus Christ, the question of sin has been settled. I don't have to sin. 
It's my choice. It's my choice to live for Jesus or to sin. It's my choice. I don't have to sin. Sometimes you just need to tell your body, you don't have to do this. You just need to tell your soul, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. The, it's been settled. The issue's been settled. That's why, who shall charge us? Right? Paul just says, who's going to charge us? Who will condemn us? Who? Who has the right to do this? See, apart from Jesus Christ, we were condemned, John 3, 18. But he that believeth not is condemned already. The Word of God says that. But verse 19, this is the condemnation that light, or this is the condemnation that light has come unto you. I just come to you. So we can walk in the light, not in darkness. If we continue to walk in darkness, it's condemnation. But because we have light in Jesus Christ, hallelujah, Five John 5, 24, Jesus died as my sin bearer, Savior and substitute. We are no longer under condemnation. So who can charge us? Who can condemn us? The devil, of course. So how do we answer him? We answer with verses 33 and 34. I'm justified. Christ died. He rose again, and he prays for me, and God is for me. God is for me. God is for me. Why? I've told you. For God sent his son to die for us, and God settled the issue of sin. You and I don't have to sin. The very thing that could kill us, destroy you. The payoff of sin is death. Jesus Christ settled it. It's been done. Calvary settled it. It's done. It's finished. It's over. You and I can live for Jesus Christ. Tell your soul. Tell your body. Tell your mind. I don't have to walk in sin. I don't have to do this anymore. I can be more than a conqueror through the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? I do. I believe that God can speak to you today as he speaks to me and challenge us. Challenge us to, to be what God wants us to be. To rise up and to allow Jesus Christ to touch our hearts, touch our lives in a very real way today. Would you pray with me? Father, I don't want to be what I used to be. I want to be more like you. It's not condemnation, it's conviction. I pray conviction over my life. I welcome conviction. Father, I accept the fact that Jesus Christ loves me. The mystery isn't that I love Jesus. That just makes sense. The mystery to me has always been that Jesus Christ, he loves me. And he settled the issue of sin. So today, I settle the issue of sin also. In Jesus' name I'd ask him. Amen.